So in the previous video, we ended with the adams bashworth uh, explicit method. Here we're going to look at what are called the implicit methods. Now before, uh, what we were doing was essentially saying that let's use uh, past data, fn minus 1, fn minus 2, fn minus 3, you know, the function evaluated, at the, that's the differential equation. Uh, quick recall, y dash equals f of xy is the problem we're solving y of x0 equals y0. So in that case, it was using the this function at um, uh, points in the past, like xn minus 1, yn minus 1, or xn minus 1, yn minus 2. And so that would give you fn minus 1, fn minus 2, and so on. So the problem we found with that was that we're extrapolating, and extrapolating uh, extrapolation is error prone. So there are more uh, the uh, probability of error is higher. So loss of accuracy, efficiency there, but loss of accuracy. So one way to overcome that would be to say that instead of, if we were to include fn plus 1 uh, in the set of points that we're trying to, um, you know, uh, basically, so when, what I'm saying is we're, we do something like this. So we include fn plus 1 in the, in the data points uh, that we uh, use to interpolate the data. Then we're not extrapolating. fn plus 1 then becomes within the, the, the interpolation points. What that would mean is then, the, if I were to apply that to, for instance, the linear uh, polynomial that we did earlier, then that would mean that P1 of x in this particular instance would be uh, Fn. Um, one sec. So the polynomial would be this, okay? So it would be this polynomial, in fact. And when we integrate that, in fact, the same way as we did before, uh, the result would be the result would be this, fn, yn plus 1, yn plus h over 2, fn, fn plus 1. Now, this is, by the way, this is known as the Adams-Moulton. This is the Adams-Moulton second order method. Now, this is called an implicit method for one reason, and that is, um, before we come to the name, let's look at what issue we face here. The problem is this fn plus 1. We don't have it essentially. To get fn plus 1, we need yn plus 1. Now, that's what we're trying to calculate here. So, how are we supposed to put that in when we don't even have it? So, obviously, that's one of the reasons why the such methods are called implicit methods, because what we usually do is, we just like we did for the previous values, we use a different method. Here, the problem is that it's not a starter. It would have to have a pair method where we would have to use this, another method, like the adams bashworth uh, in fact, okay? We could use the adams bashworth for instance, or we could use the Euler, uh, in fact, even, as, a, um, as an, a calculator for the n plus one value, for instance, uh, for the sake of argument. So what I mean by that is, if I were to use the um, uh, adams bashworth as an example, so if I were to put, let, let's me, let me put the adams bashworth here for you. So that's equal to yn plus h over 2, 3fn minus fn minus 1. Now, I could use the Euler. It's easier to show up that works, but I'm, I'm deliberately choosing the adams bashworth here. So this is ab2, the second order. It's better. It goes well with the adams moulton second order. Uh, Euler's is a weaker method. It's a first order method. So why order 1, uh, order h method. So why use that? Now, how, do, how will this work? Well, it works as follows. You see this um, fn plus 1. We'll call it fn plus 1 star. Okay? And we'll call this yn plus 1 star. Remember, fn plus 1 requires xn plus 1 and yn plus 1. xn plus 1 is not a problem because the our values of xn are, are basically equal to x0 plus nh. Okay, so th that will very easily give us whatever, as many as we want, we can generate. The problem is the yn plus 1. So the yn plus 1 star, we, we use this adams bashworth to generate that. Now, practically speaking, you should remember the AB2 itself is a multi-step method. So as you know, the uh, we need the RK2, Runga Kata second order, to actually help calculate um, the values here. So if I go through this quickly, just as a um, as a number of steps that are required, 
for me to calculate, for us to calculate, for instance, the smallest value of n we can use in n equals 1. y2 star from this will be y1 plus h over 2 into 3f1 minus f0. Now f0, uh, f0 comes from the initial condition x0, y0. To calculate f1, we'll, so we'll use uh, Rangakara uh, second order to calculate y1. That'll um, that'll give us that'll give us then the f1. Uh, f1 will be fed back in here. That f1 will um, now when we feed that back in here, that'll give us and this y1 of course uh, in here that'll give us the y2 star. Now then we'll go to the corrector or, or the explicit the implicit method. So we've got the y2 star, now we'll go to y2, remember. So y2 is going to be, of course, uh, y1 plus h over 2 into f1, okay, plus f2 star. Now, where would you get f2 star from? Well, uh, y2 star, y2 star will give us f2 star, along with, uh, <clears throat> along with x2, we can use y2 star to give us f2 star. Now that goes in here, that f2 star goes in here, and that means now we are able to calculate y2. Now here's the important thing. Uh, please keep this in mind. Now we have y2, and, uh, sorry, and uh, there, let me just give the formula there. Okay, so now that we have y2, the next thing we want to calculate is y3. y3 requires uh, f3 star. So this means we will go and calculate next is f y3 star. Now y3 star is going to be y2 plus h over 2, 3f2 minus f1. Now you don't require rk2, nothing is required, we already have f1, we have uh, f2 from the previous rk, in other words, uh, the Rangakara. So you can put that in here and f2 of course in here and calculate y3 star. Then remember that's the explicit method. We improve that, we improve that with the implicit method. And so that one is just going to be plus h over 2, and it's f2 uh, plus f3 star. And the f3 star, of course, we get it from the y3 star, and, and got, we have our value. Now the values that are the most accurate ones here are these, the y2 and the y3, and as we go uh, uh, forward. So now you can see that there are three steps to this method. It now is generally a, a multi-step method. The first step is to calculate the uh, RK2 value F, um, F1. Second step is the uh, what we call the predictor, by the way. This is the explicit method. Calculates the Y2 star. The Y2 star is fed into and improved to give us the Y2. The improved Y2, remember, that's the whole point, is this is the one that's the F um, n plus 1 included. So it's improving that. Instead of the extrapolation, now we're interpolating the data, which is supposed to be more accurate. So therefore, the Y2 is the improvement, and it's also called the corrector. So the Y2 is calculated. Now, we don't require the RK anymore. We just continue with the star, Y3 star, Y3, Y4 star, Y4. Um, y5 star, y5, and so on and so forth, okay? And these methods are also referred to as predictor correctors. Predictor corrector methods. And this combination usage is uh, leads to what are called the Adams. Methods. All right, so here we have the fourth order adams molten predictor corrector. So you can see the, the starred one, the first uh, formula you see here. This is the predictor, we call the predictor with the star on it, and the star of course is to help us calculate the uh, n plus 1 value. So the y n plus 1, of course, remember again, f x n y n. So f n is equivalent to that. So that means that what we need here is the uh, n plus 1 value, we we'll put it in here. Now, one thing I want to mention here quickly to you is that when, and this is a practical method, as a very it's a popular method. It's quite accurate and used often. So in this particular instance, when you try to, uh, for instance, use this to solve a problem. Now, if you go to the predictor, uh, in this case, we'll start with the predictor. 
the lowest value of n you can use in this case is n equals 3. Now if we use n equals 3, that means that the first thing we'll get is y4 star, which is going to be y3 plus h over 24. Look at this. Now what you will notice is that f0, easy, we'll just get it from uh, the initial condition. Now, on the other hand, we have f1, f2, and f3. These need to be calculated. For this, we so we can use the Runge code of fourth order to calculate f3, f2, and f1. After we calculate these three values, y4 star will be calculable. Once it's calculated, then it feeds into uh, the y4, y4, the corrector, uh, which is uh, this one here, and then we go on from there. Remember, again, these work in tandem yn plus 1 star first, then yn plus 1, yn plus 1 star, yn plus 1, and so on. So in other words, the next one would be we calculate y4, then that's the corrected y4, then we go for y5 star, then we'll go for the corrected y5, and so on. And this way, uh, basically, um, this is how the Adams-Moulton predictor corrector fourth order works.